Hello everyone, welcome to the NPTEL course on groundwater hydrology and management. This is week four, lecture four. In this week, we are continuing to discuss the important components of groundwater hydrology. And to continue our discussion, we will look at hydraulic conductivity, which is one of the most important parameters for groundwater hydrology. In the previous lecture, we discussed about the macroscopic view and the microscopic view of groundwater flow and how the water interacts and moves uh, according to the material, the soil or the rock material. So in the macroscopic or which is called the Darshian view, uh, you have an average linear velocity of the water particles. Uh, because in a discharge queue which goes around a cross section area A, uh, the macroscopic view does not capture what is happening inside. So how does water move inside is not uh, captured and not needed to be uh, honest because in a macroscopic view it is averaged. Okay, So you have an average linear velocity. Uh, so the velocity is assumed the same on the top, middle and bottom portions of the soil. But in the real world, uh, which is a microscopic view you see on the right hand side, you understand that the water doesn't go in a straight line, as we see here in the macroscopic. And water would uh, go in variable velocities along the soil medium. And this is because of the heterogeneous composition and arrangement of the soil particles. So you need to understand that there are microscopic differences and variable velocities. Uh, however, when you want to describe them in a particular equation, you need a macroscopic view. So that's what Darcy uh, took over um, and he uh, modeled uh, this groundwater flow through a pipe. So he didn't um, want to do it on the land and ground uh, because of the microscopic um, variations, he did it in a lab setting. So Darcy found experimentally that the discharge Q, which goes into the soil medium, is proportional to the difference of the height of the water, H, which is the hydraulic head, and the difference we also call as gradient, uh, between the ends and inversely proportional to the flow length, which is the length of the soil column through which the water flows. So you have Q is uh, directly proportional to HA minus HB. Uh, we will see what HA and HB is in the experimental setup. Uh, and Q is inversely proportional to the length of the soil column. Uh, before that, uh, just to introduce Darcy. Darcy was a, an engineer in France where he worked on fountains, water fountains. And he had to supply water through underground uh, to make sure that the water fountains were working properly. Uh, for that, he didn't have any equation. Uh, this was very, very old uh, times. Um, and so what he did is he took the soil column to his lab uh, and then uh, did this equation. And till date, uh, it is one of the most accurate, very simple, but most accurate uh, description of the groundwater flow in a saturated system. <laughs> Uh, okay, the assumption is also that the soil inside is fully saturated. We need to understand Darcy's uh, approach because Darcy was doing this to send water into the fountain. And the fountain needed a continuous supply of water uh, for which the soil and everything was saturated. Uh, and uh, through a pipe column. So uh, we can look at the differences in his experimental setup and how he got it um, in this slide. So in the Darcy's experiment, what we notice is that the uh, column of uh, sand stoppered at each end. So either sand, soil, rocks, materials, the material, the matrix is kept in a tube uh, and it is stoppered. A rubber stopper is put on the top and bottom. Okay, water saturates the pores. Water is fully saturated inside the pore space. Now apply ourselves to the previous lectures. Uh, if we say porous space is fully filled with water, that means it is a saturated system. 
and also it means there's no air inside the soil. So this column of uh, soil he took in a tube has full water inside along with the soil particles. How do you establish it? You just continue to pour water uh, until uh, uh, for a long time until the water comes out in the same rate. Okay, so Q is the input rate and if the Q water comes out, that means full it is saturated. <laughs> constant volumetric rate of inflow and outflow of water, Q. So he also maintained uh, Q to be constant uh, coming in and coming out. Uh, and that is what was needed to operate the fountain systems. So uh, he uh, would send a, a known volume of water, which is Q, which is already measured and metered uh, through a soil column of length, uh, del L, okay, which, uh, or just L and um, and then he had a stopper and Q coming out. The cross section of the tube was measured as A uh, and he had two points of monitoring inside the tube and those can be visualized as wells. Okay, so he wanted to know what is the flow inside the medium. Okay, so to understand the flow, he put two monitoring points and between the points he's going to calculate the well um, hydraulics and the hydrology groundwater hydrology movement so what he did is the first well is called well a let's say a uh, and then the well b uh, is in a lower elevation and why does water move from top to bottom because water flows from high potential to low potential there's no other uh, fancy instruments here it's just a q he is sending in uh, he doesn't have to push it because gravity is pulling the water um, from high potential to low potential. So when you put in the well, uh, automatically the water level in the well will equilibrate based on the atmospheric pressure. The pressure inside should balance the pressure outside and it falls into a particular level after it equilibrates. And that is HA we saw in the previous equa uh, equation. HB is the same uh, water level measured in the well B. Okay, so uh, del H or the hydraulic gradient, it would be your difference in the uh, H um, and um, divided by the length, del L. Okay, so what we have here is a distance between the wells and also a difference in the head. Also, what we need uh, is the elevation of the well inlet uh, from the datum which is zero so he had the table as zero and from there how much is the elevation of hydraulic uh, head one which is ha and hydraulic head b uh, which is at hb so he measured the elevation of the well z1 and z2 then he measured the total hydraulic head which is h Two and H1. So H2 and H1 are going from the datum, which is the zero elevation. So from the zero elevation, you go up to the uh, water level. This includes the elevation of the well. Okay, the elevation of the well is the uh, point at which the well opening is there from the ground, from the ground which is zero. And the hydraulic head is. Uh, on addition to that, the water column height is added. So now we have the total potential. Okay, so H1 is higher than H2, and that is why groundwater will flow from H1 to H2 because high potential, low potential. Okay, so it flows from high potential to low potential. So Q is given as the volumetric flow rate, A is the cross sectional area. Uh, H is the hydraulic head, uh, which is including the elevation, okay, elevation of the well from the ground, mm. and L is position coordinate in flow direction, okay. So how much uh, in the flow direction at, at length, okay. So Darcy's law is given as the first law. What it says, it is proportional to the hydraulic head difference, which is del H. Del H is the difference between H2, uh, H1 and H2, okay? And also proportional to the cross-sectional area, directly proportional. It is inversely proportional to the length between the wells, between the estimation points. 
So now any proportionality can be converted to an equation by introducing a proportionality constant, right? So uh, this proportionality symbol would go to an equal when we introduce a proportionality constant and that constant is called hydraulic head conductivity, okay? So the hydraulic conductivity is given as um, um, uh, K and A is the area del H by del L. So if you take the area out, I'm not interested in the total volume, but I want the velocity uh, or the discharge. Uh, and that discharge Q is rated by the area. So if you divide by area on both sides, you get small Q, which is equal to minus K dH by dL. Okay, so this is a very uh, simple equation, but captures the, the flow of water between two wells and also the discharge rate. Now let's take a step backwards. Why do we have a minus? Where did the minus sign come, right? So when we discuss it is like, okay, it is proportional and it is uh, propor uh, inversely proportional to the length. Uh, but where did the minus sign come? The minus sign is introduced by Darcy to document that the flow is in the reducing direction of potential. So the negative is a directional value, not a value that you put on discharge. You cannot minus the discharge. Okay. So what do you mean by minus discharge? Uh, there's nothing as minus discharge but the negative sign indicates that the flow is in the direction of reducing head okay so it flows from high head to low head and that capture that needs to be captured otherwise how do you know which side is the water flowing right so to document that darcy had introduced a minus sign and it flows from high potential to low potential or towards the decreasing head the head is decreasing so all of this is captured in a very, very simple equation. Uh, and to be honest, uh, working with groundwater systems uh, for the last uh, 10 to 15 years, I've noticed that this equation has been most powerful, uh, even compared to the newer equations that come um, now and then. So there's not much additions done to this equation. Uh, and all these groundwater models are based on this equation uh, for saturated flow. <laughs> These uh, equations and uh, descriptions can be taken from Fries and Cherry book, uh, 1979. As I said, it is one of the very important books uh, that a groundwater hydrologist would have. Uh, and all these government uh, schemes are also uh, referring to these books. Flow is the direction of decreasing head. So the negative sign, please understand it is a direction value, not a value that you put on the quantity. It is not a decreasing discharge, minus discharge plus discharge. It is the direction. Flow is the direction of decreasing head. Also understand the difference between a large Q and small Q. Large Q is the flow, which is a volume, and uh, Q uh, uh, meter cube uh, uh, or L times three on the power, but uh, your small Q is a rate. A velocity kind of thing. Uh, so it is a discharge uh, and uh, L by T. So the time uh, uh, would come uh, in this equation. Whereas in the discharge, it is volume per unit time. Moving on, uh, we have a horizontal pipe filled with sand to demonstrate Darcy's experiment. In a different book, I've taken a different um, uh, approach. Uh, to just show the same uh, anal uh, explanation, but uh, in a more uh, different way uh, than the Darcy's book. So horizontal pipe filled with sand. So there it was slanting, but here it is an horizontal pipe um, to demonstrate uh, Darcy's uh, experiment. Um, so as, it, as the book says, it is originally vertically or slanted uh, position, but we can also explain it in a horizontal way. Why do we need to explain it in a horizontal way is to capture the ground system. Most of our ground is not going to be always like this uh, in the field, okay? So for example, in a rural uh, area, you want to monitor uh, the groundwater flow between two uh, blocks. Uh, and the blocks are going to be straight. It's not going to be like uh, tilted, etc. But inside the ground, it may be tilted. And that is because of the layering. You remember the aquifers we talked about? 
So the layers might be tilted or different and that causes the head difference. So what this uh, diagram says is that there are two wells and two wells have different head, hydraulic head. So HA is the hydraulic uh, head on well A and HB is the hydraulic head on level B, well B. We cannot ask why is one higher than the other. It could be different aquifers. It could be different uh, pumping regimes. So even though it's horizontal, the levels are different. Now, the L is taken as the difference between the wells, right? And so the basic equation is Q is equals to minus K hydraulic conductivity, A, which is the cross-sectional area, times DH by DL. DH is your change in the head or difference between the head from HA minor and HB and your DL is the distance between the wells. Now, this DH by DL is called the hydraulic gradient. Um, and what you also notice is that uh, the um, K, the property K is the one which captures the property of the soil because area A is basically the area of the cross section. H is the hydraulic head, which is uh, a water uh, property, and del L is the uh, difference between the wells. So where does the property of the soil or the solid come? It comes in K, hydraulic conductivity. So the conductivity, as I mentioned in the previous class, is a term given to the soil and how easy it conducts or lets the water to pass through. Uh, and so we call it hydraulic conductivity, which is a property or a function of the soil. Moving on, uh, please understand there are lots and lots of units uh, for this um, values. Uh, it can be expressed as gallons per day per feet square or meters per day. Uh, it's, it's all in a L by T uh, dimension, which is length by time. So if you divide the gallons, which is a volumetric term by area, you get one length and the day is your time. So you can have multiple, multiple units. So please be careful with the units. I recently uh, was in an examination where the student was trying to say, no, it doesn't agree. The data doesn't agree. But then the simple thing was that the units were different. So make sure the units are captured correctly. I'm going to stress this again and again. Uh, please make sure what the unit is and see if it is agreeing when you compare. Okay, so let's look at uh, some of the hydraulic conductivities. In the previous lectures, we looked at permeability, porosity uh, differences, uh, and now hydraulic conductivity. If you look at it, hydraulic conductivity is a function or can be expressed as a permeability uh, and uh, along with gravity uh, constant and your viscosity and um, uh, your uh, density of the fluid. Uh, so it is basically um, a related variable. So uh, for clay, it is a very, very slow centimeters per second. So think about 10 minus nine centimeters per second is the flow rate uh, kind of velocity of, of water in clay or how clay allows water to flow. So it's very, very slow. So when you go to a field, the first question you can ask is what type of soil it is. And if they say clay, then you would understand that a groundwater recharge would take a long, long time. Uh, we'll have some examples in the next class. Uh, so moving on, uh, silt and sandy silts, the mixture of uh, clay, sand and, and um, particles uh, have a slightly reduced uh, hydraulic um, negativity or, or a higher hydraulic conductivity uh, mm -hmm. because uh, sand actually uh, can improve the hydraulic conductivity. So then when you go to uh, silty sand and fine sand, uh, you have more hydraulic conductivity. So we're going in uh, increasing hydraulic conductivity, okay? Uh, and then when you go to uh, well-sorted sands, glacial outwash, which is the deposit by snow melt, um, and well-sorted is that the uh, particles are well-sorted, good space in between, then your hydraulic conductivity increases. So the highest would be, at least on this uh, data set, it is the well-sorted gravel. Gravels are bigger in grain size um, and they have well, uh, good built structure uh, because it is well-sorted. 
uh, and it has space in between. So when you sort something, it will have a lot of space uh, in between and that space can make the medium conductive um, and that conductive uh, will increase the hydraulic conductivity of the uh, material. So uh, you would see higher water flowing through uh, recharge and uh, groundwater discharge through well sorted gravel and the least in clay. Uh, clay also swells, uh, it also uh, takes the water and holds on to it. So all this is kind of captured by your hydraulic conductivity. Uh, we can also use a uh, freeze and cherries a book that we used in the previous uh, lectures for permeability. Uh, let's take an example of again the silty sand because uh, that equates to your uh, fractured igneous metamorphic rocks. If you go back to the class notes, you understand that is the dominant aquifer system in India. The hard rock aquifer covers more than 60% um, area. And so uh, if you take that, uh, we're going to take that as an example to understand hydraulic. Uh, we'll use a centimeter per second or meter per second to uh, discuss the results. So you see that um, it is anywhere between 10 minus 4 to 10 minus 3 centimeters per second. Uh, it's very uh, slow, whereas in your uh, aquifers, alluvial aquifers, which is around 30% in the country, uh, the Ganges, Indus, Brahmaputra, the Kaveri Delta, um, so those uh, regions will have a higher uh, um, hydraulic conductivity. Uh, so those would be more on your uh, permeable uh, basalt or your clean sand, the sand, alluvial sand. Uh, and then you could see it jumps up. The hydraulic conductivity can jump up from 10 power minus 4 to 10 power minus 1. Okay, if I draw a line here, uh, it is 10 power minus 1 centimeters per second. So uh, it is moving at 1 millimeter per second, which is pretty fast. Okay, so you're thinking about per second, okay, per day. So then you convert it to per hour, per day, per year always go in time in sequence. Uh, we'll do some calculations in the uh, next class to show what does this value mean, okay? Um, but before that, I would like to um, also introduce the hydraulic head concept in this lecture. So always note the ranges, the range is big. And why is the range big? For example, in silty sand, the uh, range is uh, from 10 power minus five, to 10 power minus one. So minus uh, 10 power minus four uh, orders um, uh, of difference. And that is because of the um, mixture, the combination of your uh, silty sand could be different. Uh, and also the uh, management of the land could be different, but either way it falls within this band. Uh, also note that when I just take one value, let's say 10 power minus four, uh, it could be a clean sand, on the border of clean sand, it could be a silty sand, it could be a silt loess or a glacial till. All these four or five different types can be within that one value. So it is up to you to understand first what that material is by, by physical and lab estimations, and then you pick your hydraulic conductivity. Water levels. Uh, this is a very, very important concept. Um, for to understand uh, the hydraulic um, uh, conductivity and groundwater hydrology because that is what we are measuring okay at the end of the day the government and the system would measure water levels um, and i'm taking a small example just an introduction we will jump into one lecture on this data uh, to understand this so all this data would convert to a groundwater hydrology equation uh, by the examples we showed in Darcy. So this is a picture of uh, the uh, groundwater data that is calculated and captured by the government of Tamil Nadu. And on your right is the Central Groundwater Board. So there are two uh, agencies, at least in Tamil Nadu, uh, collecting uh, groundwater data. So they collect the data and then uh, they collect it in different uh, uh, years and months. Uh, and then they equate the difference to understand what is happening. 
So before that, let's get into the hydraulic uh, head concept. Uh, I've already explained this in the Darcy equation, but let's take one well to show how do you calculate the elevation? Because in the real world, uh, the zero is not the table because the real zero is your center of your uh, location uh, where the level is zero. So normally the zero is taken as the sea level. On the planet, the elevation zero is taken as mean sea level. Okay, So where the sea is starting, that is called zero. And from there, the elevation can go up or down. Okay, So let's take Z as zero, which is your sea level. We are, we are somewhere in... Um, uh, let's say uh, Chennai and I'm, I'm on the beach, that level, the water level is zero. And I'm moving inward into Chennai to measure the groundwater level. I need to measure the water level, the hydraulic head, and from the hydraulic head, I will go to Q, which is your Darcy's equation. Okay, so I go to a well, and the first thing you would notice is that the elevation of the well is not there. You cannot have the elevation of the well readily, the hydraulic head readily calculated. So you need to calculate. The first step you do is to ask what is the depth of the well and where the well is actually open for measurement. So here is the point of measurement. And as usual, as I showed in the previous slide, you would measure the water level or depth to the water. So you end up calculating this. So you have one value, which is the depth of the well. Um, and also you have your water level, which is psi. Okay. And what is needed for your Q uh, is H. How do you calculate H? You ask for the elevation of your ground surface at that point, uh, which you can take from topographic maps or digital elevation maps. So you have the uh, elevation of this, uh, your uh, ground, which is one. Okay, now two, you have this uh, Z, okay, which is your point depth, basically your depth of your well, which is two. And you know your psi, how much is your um, uh, psi, which is um, uh, the water level, which is three. But how do you get at two? How do you know uh, uh, how much is my uh, elevation uh, from the uh, ground, you know, from the depth of the well, which is this, you know, okay, this is your two. And, uh, but you won't know this one because you have to calculate this indirectly. Okay, so you know one, you know two and three. How do you get at uh, H? By subtracting two from one, you get this uh, area, this uh, length. Okay, so you get this length when you subtract two. Uh, from one. So one minus two is going to give you your Z. Okay. And you know psi, which is your three. So Z plus your three will give your, your Z plus your three will give you your H. And that's simple. Please understand that this is what we want. Uh, but if to, in order to get this, you have to uh, subtract your elevation uh, uh, using your depth to the well. Okay, so now you get H, you do this to another well. So I, I walk to another groundwater well and I do another H. I know the distance between the wells and then I would do the uh, equation as Q is equal to your minus hydraulic conductivity. So since I am in the field, I would ask what type of soil it is. Uh, and then I know the hydraulic conductivity from the values I showed from Freeze and Cherry book. Uh, I know the, uh, uh, let's not do the area of uh, your uh, well. So let's do uh, your Q, small Q. Okay, so we, we don't need the area of cross section. We just need the discharge velocity. So let's say Q is equal to minus K uh, times your DH which is your distance, the difference between your hydraulic heads by the length, DL, the distance between your wells. So all this we have done just by calculating two values, uh, which is your elevation of the well, and then the depth to the well to get at your 
z, which is the elevation of the well, um, from the measuring point. Then we measured the groundwater level to get at 3. Uh, 1 minus 2 got me z, and z plus 3 gives you h. Okay. So with this, uh, we would uh, calculate the groundwater uh, hydraulic head for one well. We do it for two wells, and then we establish the equation, uh, Darcy's equation. But remember, we need the hydraulic conductivity, which can be obtained from the previous uh, values which are shown here. So always have this. You can have this uh, slide. Uh, I use this slide always. Uh, to measure all the materials are there. So to any system in the world you want and take a government report to understand what is that particular soil and then go to this uh, slide and get the value and you can put it here by measuring the ground surface, the uh, elevation of the uh, Z, which you get by uh, subtracting the groundwater uh, well um, uh, elevation or the depth of the well, and you get Q. So uh, please uh, note that uh, we will also look at some Q values in the next lecture. Thank you.